This is the Kenyan teacher. At the Kenyan teacher is our usual YouTube handle. It is our pleasure to present the just concluded 2022 KCSE Chemistry Paper 2. In this video, we present the expected responses to question 1. Question 1 tested the periodic table. Welcome and be with us until the end of the video. Question 1, part A. Aluminium and phosphorus form oxides with general formula M2O3. We are asked to complete table 1 by writing the properties of the oxides. So question 1 part A tested the understanding of period 3 elements. Remember, in class, we usually look at properties and trends across period 3. And in this content, we usually consider the oxides and chlorides of the elements in period 3. This time round, we've been asked about the oxides and it is about aluminium and phosphorus in particular. So we start with the first property, which is the structure. Aluminium oxide has a giant ionic structure. Remember, it is made of an atom of a metal and a non-metal. So the structure expected here is giant ionic. For the phosphorus oxide, these are two nonmetals, so we expect simple molecular structure. Or if a candidate just wrote molecular structure, we would still give the half mark. Coming to bonding, aluminium oxide has the ionic bond, which we also call electrovalent bond. For phosphorus oxide, the bond is covalent. Then on acid base character, aluminium oxide, as we know, has properties of both acid and bases. So such substances, we call them amphoteric substances. For the phosphorus oxide, it shows acidic properties. This table was marked out of three marks, so each of these properties were awarded half a mark. To now part B, which tested on the general understanding of the grid. This grid is what we usually call the periodic table in chemistry. So part B, the grid in figure one shows part of the periodic table. We are asked to use it to answer the questions that follow. Now, one thing that candidates should know is that the examiner of chemistry expects us to know slightly more than what is being presented in class. For example, this grid, the vertical columns are usually the groups. So here we have group one, we have group two, and then we usually tell our students that in between group two and three, there is a separation. And this separation, most of the time, we put it as one group and we call them transition transition elements now if you look at question one part b 
the examiner actually expected the learner to know that transition elements actually occupy 10 groups. And that is between period, uh, group 2 and 3. We have transition elements that occupy 10 other groups. Then we move to group 3, then group 4, group 5, group 6, group 7, and then we end here with group 8. And we all know, again, that group 1, we call them alkali metals. Group 2, we call them alkaline earth metals. And then we usually proceed all the way to group 7, where we have halogens. And finally, group 8, we call them noble gases. So all these are dis discussed in form 2, and we believe all the students should be aware of this. But... There is a new information that was expected that the learner ought to have known. How many groups do we have under transition elements? With that, we now move to periods. This one that runs horizontally and has only two elements is period one. Then we have period two, again running across. Period three, period four, and period five. But this grid is not complete. A complete grid would have up to seven periods with another separation other than transition elements. This separation is called lanthanides. Lanthanides is a separation found in period 6. This is between elements with atomic number 57 to 72. We call them lanthanides because we name that series based on the first element. That element is element number 57 that is called lanthanum. So that first member gives the name of the separation and we call them lanthanides generally. I'm doing this because you never know. Next time the examiner may expect us to know more about this periodic table. So please take note that in period 6 there is another separation just like we have for transition elements but this time round we call them lanthanides. The separation has elements from number 57 to 72. Then we have another separation in period 7 that we call actinides. This separation has elements between number 89, that's atomic number 89, and 104. So the series are named after element number 89, which is actinium. So this makes our complete periodic table to have a total of 109 known elements. With that extra information, let's now go ahead and answer our questions as tested based on the grid. Question 1, part B Roman 1, give the total number of elements that can be placed in period 1. Period 1 is here, we only have two elements that can be placed for a half a mark. For period 5, I know most students went for eight, but today we've known that transition elements in period five will occupy 10 groups. So that makes a total of 18 elements for period five for the next half a mark. For Roman two, part B, we are asked to place each of the following elements in the grid. We start with element X, 
whose atomic number is 14. So this was very easy. A student was supposed to know that the first 20 elements are placed in this grid based on their atomic numbers, and we do that period-wise. That is period after period. So element atomic one is here. Atomic number two is here. We move to number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. That would give us the position of element X for the first mark as per the grid. Moving on, we are also asked to place element Y which has the highest first ionization energy. Now, generally, it is the noble gases that are known to have very high ionization energy. That is why they usually don't form compounds. So, our element Y must be a noble gas, but as you move down, we've always said ionization energy decreases. So obviously the one with the highest has to be this one here that has the smallest atomic radius. That would be the element with the highest first ionization energy. We would go for a noble gas with the smallest atomic radius. That would give us the next one mark for the grid. Moving on, we also ask to place element Z, which has the lowest first ionization energy. This one now has to be an alkali metal. The reason is that alkali metals have the least nuclear charge. The weakest nuclear charge. So here, the one with the lowest ionization energy would have to be an alkali metal, but that with the largest atomic radius. So the position of Z would have to be where I have placed it. An alkali metal with the largest atomic radius. That would earn ourselves the next mark. We are still asked to place element L whose ion L2 minus, which means it accepts two electrons to form this ion. So the ion has an electron uh, configuration or arrangement of 2, 8, which means this 8 here was achieved after accepting two extra electrons. So ordinarily, the element has a configuration of two, six, so that its ion can have a configuration of two, eight. For that matter, it's atomic number eight. So we go back to our grid and count periodically from here until we reach number eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is where your L would be for another one mark. Moving on, we are asked to place element D. Element D this time has an ion of two plus, which means it loses two electrons to form this ion. And the configuration of the ion is 288. So it means the original element or atom had a configuration of 2882. That gives it atomic number 20. So a student was expected to go back to the grid and place an element with atomic number 20. Quite easy. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So this is the position of D for our next mark. We are asked as well 
to place element Q. This is a halogen with the highest atomic radius. This was actually the easiest question. Halogens occupy group 7. And the one with the largest or highest atomic radius would be down here. Because atomic sizes increase down the group. That would be Q for the next map. Finally, question 1 asked us to place element R, which belongs to period 3, and it exists as a monoatomic gas. Monoatomic gases are usually noble gases. So place to place R, someone would move through period 3 all the way to group 8. That would be the position of R. For the next mark, so placing all these seven elements in their correct positions would earn ourselves a total of seven marks. So question one was worth 11 marks. With that, we are through with our short video on the periodic table as tested in the year 2022 chemistry paper 2 question number one we want to thank you for your continued support and we ask that you keep it at the kenyan teacher for more insightful review of past kcse question papers all the best.